What do you think of the, this year's guests? I'm excited for the guests to come. I can't wait to see everybody, and I just hope they have an incredible time. Did you invite all the booths? They came by themselves, but I went by and spoke with everybody, and I'm really excited for people to shop around because there's some great vendors over here. So yeah, I'm excited to get this party started. <laughs> from Shadia Styles and I'm here at the event today showcasing my business that offers a lot of trendy accessories, clothing, a lot of vacation wear, a lot of um, street wear, everything when it comes to fashion I do have also custom made I do custom made outfits and pretty much anything that has to do with fashion look me up my name is Shadia and my website is shadiastyles.com and remember sexy is always in style. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the owner of Naturally Unmarked. Naturally Unmarked is a vegan organic body care line. So I hand make and hand craft every product. It starts with the recipe and then it goes from there. I've been in business for three years and it's, I love it. We have so many customers on Instagram and TikTok and it's just been a crazy, whirlwind of fun and I also have my daughter here with me Zoe Lee. Hi I am Marie Angelique Castillo and I am the proud owner of Al Jeweled. We are a permanent jewelry company in Houston Texas actually the premier permanent jewelry company in Houston, Texas, and we want to give you the outdoor experience. We customize 14 karat gold filled and sterling silver and bring you the hottest, greatest pieces to die for. And we cannot wait to meet you. Hi, I'm Courtney with Her Down There. We are a women's health care clinic. We specialize in hormone imbalances, weight loss, and health care for her. Please come and see us. I'm Kalisha Bell. My business is Posadi Soul. Posadi Soul is an organic skincare line that focuses on aromatherapy so we focus on self-love and self-care all the scents are aromatherapy so they help you relax and rejuvenate while you're taking a shower or taking a bath or just wanting to put body butter on right before you go to bed. So uh, give us a like or follow.
Cause I do so. Reporting live from Women in Suits. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. I'm glad to be in the house. Can't, can't wait to see what's in store for us today. Women in Suits 2024. Hi guys, I'm Sierra Jarde, the CEO of the Princess Beauty. I'm a licensed esthetician specializing in facials, lashes, and brows, which aims to serve clients in the depths of self-love for beauty maintenance. Hope to see you guys soon. Shop with us at the Princess Beauty CO.
owner and creator of Dare Me Beauty Lip Glitz Headquarters. And this is my assistant today. Her name is Zariah White. Zariah, say hi. Hello. And we're here at the Women in Suits extravaganza I know it's not extravaganza but it's so extravagant and we're here to present our products which is called Jeremy Beauty Lip Glitz these are our different lip glitz colors and what lip glitz is lip glitz is a cross between lipstick and lip gloss so it's not as thick as lip stick and it's not as thin as lip gloss therefore I call it lip glitz and what makes it glitz is the sparkly the glitz glitz effect so we're here to just present some of our products we have a lip care kit and we also have a lip care kit specifically designed for smokers and it's infused with a lot of vitamins and oils to help rejuvenate the skin tone of the smoker's lips. So, whenever you get a chance, stop by our website, www.daremebeauty.com and see what we have in store for you. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Courtney with her down there. Our women's health care clinic. We specialize in hormones, weight loss, and general care for young women. We specialize with uh, women of color. So if you need a provider, please come and see us.
That's a long time, yeah. But um, I had a mom named Lucy Beckham, and she was one of my models. And Sydney, I've already told you before, like, me giving you this is because of your growth. Like, from 15 to almost 30, girl, you have done so many things, and I'm going to let you tell your story. I'm going to do it, but I'm just so thankful that you're here. I'm thankful for the woman that you are becoming. I'm thankful for even just once again, I'm very thankful and I can't wait for you to tell your story so everybody else can know who you are and what you do. So before we do that, let's go ahead and give you a word. Get out of picture.
they ask you how are you doing, they're not truly asking you how are you doing and how can I help you and how can I be there for you. How can I assist you? What resources do you need? We're in an age now where we're growing more in understanding mental health and growing in being healthy for ourselves. But as we know, and as, especially for a lot of our parents and former generations, that was not a thing. Um, and so growing up, I had really no idea of how to scale that path. And so that's how she's like, she's known me from, from back then to now. I was just a wild girl. Didn't really care much about life or myself. Um, but as I got older, going to college, I began developing a faith in God. And that was really what shifted my lifespan because it gave me a purpose. And I began to see why I do make you feel like you're the only one that it happened to. Or that if I talk about it to someone, that someone's going to judge me. But I can guarantee that every time I've shared any part of my story, I've opened up my wound and I've shared vulnerable places of myself. I've received so many women in me and I come to me and like I struggle with that. I was abused that way. Um, I dealt with depression. I'm struggling with suicide right now. I was planning on killing myself this morning. It's just we, we are so used to going, 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 that we don't even take into account that the person next to us could be on their very last straw. Just because we put on a good face, I'm a good face. I could throw on a suit, go on a courtroom, go clear, go to happy hour, and then go home and just crumble. Um, and I, I've tried to make it my duty, not just for myself, but every person that I come in contact with, to not only love them, that not in myself, but in every woman that has been connected 
to everything for everybody and not just a fashion a model or coach or anything you do more than that you are part of my inspiration I saw you I took a video of you I'm really 
woman is supposed to be in last year, and I saw him going out the door, I was picking up somebody, and he was like, if you need to do anything in my place, I got you, girl. And I was like, ooh. I was talking to Louise, I was like, Thank you. 
it's Elizabeth's world. It's nothing else to do with me. So generally, I try to get up early in the morning and have my devotion time. I try to pray. I just try to set my intentions. Um, it's always so important to set your intentions in the morning or whenever you can. Set your intentions of what your day is going to be like. Plan it out at the beginning of the week if you can. Just creating order, I think, is the most efficient part. It's like if you can see it written down, then it will be able for you to execute it in an easier way. Thank you. 
directly. I think putting yourself out there to put together events or becoming, you know, your own boss so you can employ people is obviously to the best opportunities. But if you're not in those roles yet, I think it's important to God puts people in front of you for a reason. So make the most of that opportunity to, to help them, encourage them, and I'm sure it's going to come you know, back to you from that individual and someone else. Because I really don't bother about any of that. I am Hasna. So I wake up in the morning and I love who I am. Automatically, I love everybody else. Yeah. So when I From Dubai. When I moved over here, I didn't know anybody. When I started my photography journey, I didn't know anybody. But one thing that I, I never wanted to do is to fit. I wanted to inspire, and I wanted them to inspire me. So when I see my friends are from whatever race or ethnicity or culture, that makes me so happy. And that's why I'm able to be chameleon and talk to everybody because I put God first. So when I talk to God, God says, yeah, this is where it's supposed to be and this is I go, anybody I talk to, it's God's will for me to do that. Um, I, I just always been so um, 
that's my credit go to boss me. Um, because when I first started, I was like, I'm the first entrepreneur in my family. Um, and I'm like, my parents like, go get a job, but my parents are first generation college students. Like, they're first generation masters, first generation doctors. So I had big shoes to fill, but I'm not, school is not really for me. Like, I just always
more avenue that you know that this is where I'm supposed to be rooted in. And it doesn't mean that you still can't be, you know, contracted or consulted or sourced out and paid to be able to help in other areas that you may be interested in. But it's going to be your, your duty and in your journey to ask God to show you, hey, where am I rooting myself right now? You root yourself there, you put all your gifts and talents, finances, prayers, tears, fasting, all of that into that. You sow that ground. And you, and you work and you till that work. And then when God begins to sprout that up, you get other connections. Like she was saying, people will, tear saying, people will cross her and reach out about going to other cities, other places. People will find you because of the light and the anointing and the gifting and the position that God will place you in. But you just need to make sure that you're there, like she said, you're prepared so that when preparation comes, the opportunity is there, you're prepared and you are suited and saturated to be able to walk into that. That's good. Now, we're not saying like to not 
do those for the gigs. Do those gigs, but just remember your focus. Remember what you're passionate about so that you don't get lost. Because if you get lost, then you're going to have to kind of not start all over, but it's like, you know, you stop right here and it's just finish everything up. So you have to go back to that 20% to get it back to the 80 to get it to 100 math or whatever. But anyway, yeah. So just kind of focus on what's important to you and then branch off and do what's best for you. to a job that I had started. 
started to work out what had been going on just so we didn't work because that wasn't going to work. And it was so hard. It was like, you know, it was like, it was literally like I felt like I was completely, um, could reach about to reach that moment, like, I mean, through, like, I was hanging out with Jimmy Fox shooting basketball in the backyard. I was going to Michael Bay's parties. He's the guy that produced Transformers, like, you know, and I, I was, like, so close to, like, what I thought and then everything. So, in that moment, it's like, you, you have to realize maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's the only thing that I could come to, right? It's either that or God wanted to reroute me in a new way. And I do have a talk show today, so I do But it's like, that brought me back to Houston. But like, just going through all of that, like when I, when me and I moved to Houston, we bought a $12,000 um, Ford F-150 with a camper on my back and stuffed everything we had in it and moved in with my grandma. And like had nothing, and I, within a few short years, you know, I actually became a millionaire. So I, I went from like literally absolutely nothing. I didn't grow up with anything. So it wasn't like me calling dad and mom, um, but I just, I feel like I had. I think you have to listen and she mentioned be still. And sometimes it's like there's a whole other direction for you and it might lead you back to what you want to do, but if the timing isn't maybe right.